107.5 WBLS, your number one source for R&B. A lot of people don't know about the struggle and see a lot of young people who listen to this radio station. They they hear L.A. Reid, they hear about the success. But we want to talk about the struggle. So a lot of people who are listening also are very familiar with Midnight Star. Right. And Solar Records. So let's talk about Midnight Star and meeting Babyface and that whole uh, oh, yeah, take us yeah, back that was, to maybe yeah, that, that was, week. That was really special. You know, um, my band, The Deal, uh, we were making demos and we didn't we didn't have a, a keyboard player in the group. So I had met Midnight Star. We all worked in the clubs in Indianapolis. Uh, they worked at a club called the Mark IV, and my band worked in a club called the Zodiac Lounge. But we used to visit each other. Right. So Bo Watson, who is the keyboard player for Midnight Star, I asked him to come in and do the sessions for my my band, The Deal. He came in and he was and he liked what he heard, so he went back to Reggie Calloway, who was the leader of Midnight Star, right. and mm-hmm. told Reggie that he should check us out. So Reggie came, listened to what we had, and offered us a recording contract with their label, Midstar Productions, which was a deal with Solar Records. Mm-hmm. So uh, we accepted it. We made our demo tapes, took a photograph. They sent it in to Dick Griffey, who's at Solar Records, mm-hmm. and, and he signed us. He never met us. Uh, he signed us based on the photograph and the cassette. And right? take and us kind of rare. Take us to the day that you met Babyface, that you wanted, that you knew that you wanted to maybe sign oh, him. Oh, yeah, that was I mean, or, or That was the day the I, I walked into the studio with Midnight Star mm-hmm. and Babyface. I didn't know who it was. There was someone singing a song called Play Another Slow Jam, This Time Make It Sweet. Mm. And I was like, oh, man, who is that? Who is that voice? It was sounding so sweet. And when it was done and he came out of the booth, I was like, it was Kenny Edmonds. I was like, oh, my God, that was you? Right? Who I knew I had met him one time, and I knew he was incredible. But right. I, I had never been in a room working with him right, or listening right. to him like that. And when he came out of the room, um, you know, and he and I struck up a conversation. And I kind of knew right in that in that moment that there was a possibility that he and I could work together. So right. I asked him to join my band, The Deal. Mm-hmm. And he joined. And from the book, I found out that the two lead singers, well, the, the one lead singer that you had, had an issue maybe with Babyface singing lead. Because, see, a lot of people think... The deal, Babyface was the lead singer, right? And everybody else was in the band, but that's not how it went. Yeah, Babyface was—he um, didn't sing lead on the first album at all. Um, and our first album, we had a, we had a hit called Body Talk, um, and the second album, which was um, not a great success, was the first album that he sang lead on. Okay, and and it, and it took a band meeting uh, to 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 get that done. And, you know, because we had a rule when he came into the band. It wasn't a rule. It was really just a condition when he joined the band. I already had two lead singers. And he said, so what, what would you like for me to do in the band? Right. And I said, well, you're an incredible guitar player. You're an incredible keyboard player. You're an incredible songwriter. That's your gig. Right. And he was like, okay, cool. I'll do right. it. Um, so Dick Griffey heard a demo and said. The demo was. The demo was a song called Sweet November. Right. And, and he says. Uh, I want that song on the album. I said, yeah, except, you know, Kenny, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else can really sing it, and Kenny is not really like the lead singer of the band. He said, "What?" he basically said, what are you talking about? Like, put that song on the record. Right. Get the guy you know? who's on the demo to yeah. sing it. So we got, so we did it, and, um, and it was great. And it wasn't a huge protest because all the guys, we all really loved each other, and, mm-hmm. and we were family. To this day, we're still family, you right. know. But, but it took a couple of meetings, though. And it's just funny how things work out. It sure yeah. is because I guess there's a lot of people out there who just thought that out the gate, you know, Babyface was the lead singer of the no. deal. But can, can I can I jump in right quick? Here's the most incredible thing to me mm-hmm. is when he was Kenny Edmonds. Right. He was a great singer, but the day we the day Bootsy Collins, I was producing Bootsy, and Bootsy saw Kenny one day, and he, and Kenny walks in. And he says, Babyface, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> Out of the blue. Out of the blue. Yeah. With his guitar in his hand, uh-huh. Babyface, right? And Kenny didn't like it that much, but it caught on. So that weekend, we were doing a gig, and 
I told the guys, let's introduce him as Babyface tonight. We've been introducing him as Kenny Edmonds. Right. This particular night, we decided to introduce him to the crowd as Babyface. And, and lo and behold, he had yeah. groupies a backstage. A star was born. A star was born. <laughs> it was like the one name change changed everything. Everything. And right. all of a sudden, he became Babyface. Yeah. You know.